The previous video introduced state feedback with canonical forms. This video looks at transformations to enable you to get into a canonical form. So in the previous video we showed state feedback can place poles precisely when the system is in control canonical form. So what you're looking to do is identify a state feedback K such that the poles of the closed loop which are given by the eigenvalues of phi, are exactly where you want. And if A and B are in control canonical form, that's easy to do. However, in general, the system will not be in canonical form, but you might still want to place the poles where you want them to be. So this video shows how you can create a transformation, a similarity transformation, which will allow you to get the canonical form from a non-canonical form, and thus implicitly allow you to do pole placement. Remind us then, control canonical form looks like this, where you see the key parameters of the pole polynomial are in the top row, and then you have these ones in the lower diagonal and zeros elsewhere, a one in the top row of B and zeros elsewhere. Now, a transformation to control canonical form will only exist if the system is fully controllable. So that's something that you just need to check. Make sure the system is fully controllable before you um, continue with the method used in this video. An observation then. In the control canonical form, the eigenvalues are determined solely by the parameters along the top row. And so what we said in the previous video is you can place the poles precisely by selecting the top row of A precisely. And as long as you can do that without changing any other coefficients, then this will work, and that was covered in video two. Similarity transformations then. These were covered in the first section of this chapter on state space. So what we said is if you imagine that you're gonna create a new state Z, which is given by transformation T times the original state X, then you can do something like this. Originally you had x dot equals ax plus bu, but you can now create an equivalent state space model by writing t inverse z dot equals a t inverse z plus bu, or you can rearrange that a bit further and you can end up with an expression like this one at the bottom. z dot equals a hat z plus b hat u, where a hat is given by t a t inverse and b hat is given by T, B. And you can also do things with the output matrices, though we're not considering that here. Now, let the state feedback for a system A and B be K. So I've got a system AB and I've got a state feedback K. In the transform state, we're going to have a slightly different control law because now we're going to feedback Z instead of X. So if your feedback law was u equals minus kx, that's going to become minus k t inverse times z. So I'm going to define k hat to be k t inverse. And the key point is the closed loop dynamic is now given by a hat minus b hat k hat. Let's compare some the controllability matrices then. For the original system, the controllability matrix is given by B, A, B, all the way up to A to the N minus 1B. And for the transform system, it'll be given by B hat, A hat, B hat, A hat squared, B hat, and so on. But there's actually much closer link between these two than you might think, because we happen to know that B hat is TB and A hat is T A T inverse. So if I substitute those expressions into here and multiply it out, you get things like T B, T A T inverse T B, T A T inverse squared T B. Now I'm not going to carry on here, but I'm going to illustrate a key point. What you'll notice is there's a T inverse T next to each other, so they can be cancelled. And that's going to be the case all the way along, there's going to be lots of T inverse T's next to each other, which therefore will cancel out. And what you find is that this MCZ term reduces to T on the outside and exactly the same controllability matrix as you had for your original system. So MCZ is actually given by T 
times mcx. So there's a strong relationship between these two controllability matrices. Basically, one of them is T multiplied by the other. So remark, we can get the control canonical form directly from the transfer function. So in principle, if we know A, B, C, and D, then we can write down the control canonical form almost by inspection. So what you do is you find the transfer function, and that's the sort of relationship you'll use, C times SI minus A inverse times B plus D. So I'm going to assume that that gives you a transfer function, something like this. And of course, once you've got that, you can write the control canonical form by inspection by putting the denominator parameters here in the top row of A. So here's some key insights. If we know the system in control canonical form, then we can find the transformation that takes us from an arbitrary form to the control canonical form. And this is how we're going to do it, using the slides that we've just been through. We know that in the given form, x dot equals ax plus bu. And in the control canonical form, we've got z dot equals a hat z plus b hat u. But if we imagine that the transformation that takes you from one to the other is this matrix T, then we also know that the following relationship holds. That MCZ equals T times MCX. And MCZ we know, as long as we know A hat and B hat. And MCX we know, as long as we know A and B. So therefore, we can work out what T should be. So if we know the transformation that takes us from control canonical form to another form, then this is the key point. We can do pole placement in the control canonical form because that's easy, and then find the equivalent state feedback for the original form using this transformation. So in the given form, we'd have x dot equals ax plus bu, u equals minus kx. And in the control canonical form, we'd have z dot equals a hat z plus b hat u, and u equals minus k hat z. But because we know this relationship, z equals tx, then, and we also know that t is given by mcz times the inverse of mcx, then we can do this. We can find k hat, and then, we can determine k as k hat times t. So you'll see the design is done in the control canonical form. We find k hat in the control canonical form. We use this expression here to get t. And then we can use those two together to get k for the original system. So here's the algorithm. Reminder, first find the transfer function representation and use a formula something like this, C SI minus A inverse times B. Second step, find the control canonical form, so find the matrices A hat and B hat, which you can write down by inspection. Third step, find a pole placement state feedback for the control canonical form, which was covered in the previous video. So you write U equals minus K hat Z. Find the transformation matrix using the controllability matrices. So in other words, we write T equals MCZ times the inverse of MCX. And finally, you find the state feedback for the original state space system using the formula K equals K hat T. Some examples then to show this process. Here's the system, and you'll see that this A and B are clearly not in control canonical form, and so I can't use the simple approach. I have to use a transformation approach or another one. So let's go through the steps. First, find the control canonical form. To do that, I need the transfer function, so I find the underlying transfer function. There it is, minus 5s plus 9.2 over s squared plus 1.4s plus 2.4. I then find the underlying control canonical form, so a hat is given here, minus 1.4, minus 2.4 in the top row, and there's b hat, and c hat we're not actually using, but I've given it there for completeness. Having got that, what I'm going to do next is find the similarity transform which links these two forms 
together. So, we need the controllability matrices. So for A and B, the controllability matrix is B, AB, A squared B, and so on. And here, because it's only 2 by 2, in fact, it's just going to be B and AB. And so there it is. MCX is minus 1, 3, 2, 1 1.8. I can also find the controllability matrices for A hat and B hat. And again, I only need the first two terms in this expression. So B hat, A hat, B hat. And there it is. There's MCZ. And then I notice there's a similarity transform relating the two so that T is given by MC times MCX inverse. So I can find T. Finally, I say, OK, where was my desired pole polynomial? And let's achieve that first using a feedback in the control canonical form. So there was my control canonical form. A hat was minus 1.4, minus 2.4 on the top row. So when I add my feedback, my top row becomes minus 1.4 minus k1, minus 2.4 minus k2. And clearly, the parameters I'm looking for are here. I want a 2 and a 1. So if I use k hat equals 0.6 and minus 1.4, then I will get the parameters I want in my control canonical form. And you'll see, we've shown that there, if you use these k parameters, these ones here, 0.6 minus 1.4, then a hat minus b hat k hat becomes what we want. And the final step is to find the feedback for the original system. So I simply write k equals k hat t. I've written down t here for you. We computed that on the previous slide, obviously. When I do those computations, and there's the corresponding k. Now here's some MATLAB code, just so that you can cover it yourself if you want to. This top block of code does the canonical form. So you'll see this line forms the canonical form from the transfer function. This line forms k hat from the canonical form and the desired parameters I wanted 2 and 1. And then I confirm that I have the eigenvalues I expect by doing the eigenvalues of a hat minus b hat times k hat. So you don't need that line, but that's just to give you confidence that it's placed the poles where you want it. Now to get the feedback in the original space, I found the controllability matrix for x, the controllability matrix for the canonical form, I've calculated t using the formula I've given you, and then I've just written k equals k hat times t. So exactly as given in the, in the um, algorithm. And again, you see, I get the closed loop poles that I expected. Second example then, and we'll do this one slightly quicker. So again, you see it's not in canonical form, so I need to use this transformation method. So the first step, find the control canonical form. Here's the underlying transfer function, and here's the underlying canonical form. And again, you'll see the coefficient of 1 has gone here, the coefficient of 0.18 has gone here, the coefficient of 0.39 has gone here. So forming the canonical form is very quick. Next, can I find the similarity transform relating the original AB and the canonical forms for A and B? So to do this, we find the controllability matrices. So for the original one, the controllability matrix is B, A, B, A squared B. And I've given you that here. And in the canonical form, I forgot to cross those ones up. You only need three terms. So it's B hat, A hat, B hat, A hat squared, B hat. And there you see I've given you M, C, Z. And so the similarity transform relating the two forms is given here by M, C, Z times M, C, X inverse equals T. Now, the pole polynomial that I actually wanted is this one here. s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2.75s plus 0.75. So first, we'll do this by defining a feedback in the control canonical form. So what we're going to do is look at the top row in this canonical form. And we want that top row to be minus 3, minus 2.75, minus 0.75. So it's clear that you can choose k1, k2, k3 to get that. And here's the answer. k hat is 2, 2.57, 1.14.
And our final step is to find the feedback for the original system, which uses this formula, k equals k hat times t. And we formed t on the previous page, and here's the k that you get. And again, a demonstration that you can do MATLAB code for this. So this is very similar MATLAB code to the previous example. You'll see here, I've defined my desired PC. Here, I found my canonical form, state space matrices. I've defined my k hat, which is the k I want in my canonical form. And I've verified that that gives me the closed loop poles that I want in the canonical form. And then I found the controllability matrices in the original and the canonical form. I found the transformation using the formula I gave you and defined k as k hat t and again verified that it's given me the closed loop poles that I expect. So in summary, we've introduced the concepts of pole placement state feedback without a control canonical form and we've shown that assuming full controllability and that's important because we have to inverse these controllability matrices there exists a transformation matrix to generate the equivalent control canonical form and pole placement design can be done using the canonical form and then the feedback parameters for the original system can be obtained using a corresponding similarity transform and that transform can be defined from the controllability matrices. You will of course notice that this is not a paper and pen exercise in general because you're doing a lot of matrix multiplication and inversion.